Our schools are no longer schools. They're state-sanctioned indoctrination camps where your children are being inducted into the climate change cult, the radical gender theory cult, and a cult of nihilistic self-loathing. Um, we've had enough. We've actually had enough. After submitting multiple appeals, my account was permanently banned from TikTok with no reasons given whatsoever. And as you know, this is not the first time that people get silenced for speaking up. The masses are starting to realize that there is in fact an agenda behind all of this. And the truth is becoming crystal clear day after day. Listen to what Iman has to say on the matter. Why is there a war against people who speak up against the media's agenda and encourage people to think for themselves? Why is it that only one side of the argument gets silenced? And lastly, who is behind all of this? And here's why. I found myself reading about the motives and end goals of the ancient Greek wars, the Roman civilization, all the way down to World War I and II. And I will say at first, I thought I might have been exaggerating by comparing an actual war with guns and bombs and planes to a few social media cancellations and bans. But after really digging deep into the past wars the world has lived through, I have noticed that there is something truly nefarious going on. But what is it and why? What sparked every single one of those wars was the strive for control. It was not the strive for one nation to control another, or the strive of its people to control their land, but rather the strive of a very small group of individuals to control everything that they could put their hands on, and above all perpetuate such control for generations to come. From the Roman Wars to the Cold Wars, there was always a small group of people acting behind the scenes with their hidden motives masked behind false ideals. And that, my friends, is why I call them the puppet masters. Everything that happens around you is carefully planned by the puppet masters in control and executed by their puppets that we get to see around us. Now that video was deep, but honestly, it's true. The world is definitely not an innocent place. And at the root of all of this evil is secularism. Secularism is the separation of church and state, meaning you can believe in whatever religion you want, but when it comes to politics or shaping a state or managing the people's affairs, let the people take care of that. But what ended up happening was that power and sovereignty landed into the hands of a select few individuals. And with that power, they used their human bias and their personal interest to control the masses and benefit their own selves most. How convenient. But the question is, how did secularism become so widely accepted in the first place if it's so evil? To understand why, let's rewind back to the time it all began 400 years ago in the West. In that time, when the church did run the affairs of the people and it was the official state system, there was so much oppression and so much political tyranny. Women weren't even deemed human. Slavery was rampant and people were killed simply for challenging the elites. And it was all justified using religion. In fact, the average civilian was enslaved by the elites because God instructed it, and anyone who showed resistance was simply killed. The oppression got so bad and lasted for so long that the people were sick and tired. And for that, secularism emerged as a solution to dissociate the church from the state. And since the people were desperate for a change, it quickly replaced the oppressive church system with little resistance and is now the dominating ideology of the West. Although secularism did admittedly improve the state of the West, it still remains a bad solution to a worse problem. Now let's contrast this with the Muslim world. How did secularism affect the political climate in the East when it imposed itself on it by force? Well, to know the answer, we need to know what the Muslim world looked like in the first place. Just like the church was the state system in the West, Islam was the state system in the East. Except unlike the church state, the Islamic state was far from oppression. Humanity experienced unprecedented peace, unprecedented progress, and unprecedented prosperity. And for that, it was spreading like wildfire. In fact, the state was getting letters from other nations asking to be liberated and to be joined with the Islamic state willingly. Can you imagine? Not only that, but the Christians and the Jews live peacefully in our lands. They were allowed to judge their own affairs and their own problems using their own books and their own laws. 
There are even times documented where Christians actually fought wars alongside the Muslims because of the perks they enjoyed living under Islamic rule. The Muslims were at the forefront of knowledge. They founded algebra, they pioneered science, they literally had too much money to handle because of the purity of its economic system. And guess what? Unlike the West, the women in the Muslim world were liberated. In fact, the very first university in history was founded by a Muslim woman. I can go on and on, but the point is that humanity was liberated. And as the Islamic State expanded into the West, this put immense pressure on the secular puppet masters. And they realized that if they did nothing about it, that would be the end for them. So they waged an intellectual war on the Muslims and sadly won the battle. In 1924, the Islamic State was dissolved and the systems and governments that run our countries today are puppet systems put in place by these puppet masters of the secular West. And that's why there's not been a single Islamic country in the world for almost a hundred years. And if we reflect on what happened in those hundred years because of secularism, it should break our hearts. Just look around you. The Muslim world is plagued with problems. It's filled with poverty. It's filled with oppression. It's seen as backwards and the Muslim identity itself has become a source of shame and disgust. Secularism quite literally destroyed us and believe me, it's in the process of destroying the rest of humanity too, including the West, which we are already seeing unfold right before our eyes today. So what's the solution? Before I tell you, there is one very important lesson that we should all reflect on. And that is to notice just how perfect society was when Islam was applied holistically. It gave humanity exactly what it was looking for. And the only explanation as to how it could be so perfect and achieve that perfection is that it must have come from Allah. Only a being with perfect knowledge and no bias can guide humanity to what is best. And the minute we decide to turn away from his guidance and try to solve our own problems instead, there will be problems just as we're seeing happen today. So the ultimate solution is to eliminate secularism from our countries in the East and to re-implement Islam over there as the state system once again. And anyone who advocates for anything other than that are themselves a product of secularism. So beware of those people at all costs whether they're Muslim or not.